Well, hello, Story Chasers. This is Amber again. And behind me, I have Kathy. Hi. <laughs> I met Kathy just like that. She was waving, yelling my name. Uh, in one of my videos when I was in Savannah, I talked to you about how this lady was on a, what was that, like a tour? It was a tour, yeah. Okay. Old Savannah Tours. The Old Savannah Tours. And all of a sudden, I hear this, hi, Amber. And I turned around, and it's Kathy. And lo and behold, we were staying in the same spot overnight. She put a note on my door and here we are. What I want to do is show you her RV and get a quick tour of it. It's really cool. I've never seen one of these before. All right, guys, let's get started. This is Sugar, by the way. Hi, Sugar. Can you sit for me? Good girl, Sugar. This is Sugar. This is Kathy's traveling companion. So Kathy, tell me, how long have you been on the road now? I've been on the road for three months. Prior to that, I took this rig out on some camping trips, but that was just from home base. I have rented my house out for one year, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm gonna obviously stay on the road for that full year. And so, so far since you've been on the road, have you, do you like prefer boondocking, campgrounds? Like what's kind of your style of camping at night? I've done a real mix. I love boondocking. Um, I have but we're on the East Coast, so. Yeah, it's gonna get more challenging. Started in Florida and I'm headed north to New England. I'm going to turn left and drive across the northern part of the country. I'm going to a born free rally at Mount Rushmore in September, visiting family in Washington state. And then I plan on spending next winter in the desert because I've never done that. I think it'll be interesting. So far, what have you thought about the whole boondocking experience? Cause a lot, one of the big questions I get, especially from women is I'm scared. How do you feel safe? How do you feel comfortable? So with you just starting out, have you experienced any of that fear? I have zero fear. And why I, do you think that is? I did all the research before I got on the road. I won't discuss it, but I have ways of protecting myself. I'm extremely situationally aware. I just choose not to live my life in fear. I think that's a big part of it. Um, I travel with a dog and she alerts to things quicker than I do. Amazing. She's your little safety net, isn't she? She is. <laughs> I love to boondock. I'm very comfortable doing it. And um, I think it's really important right now because campgrounds are very full. So you better be prepared to make yourself comfortable outside of a campground. And I have uh, I carry a list with me at all times in case I'm tired or not thinking clearly. Places where you can boondock legally and safely. And whenever I think I'm not sure where I'm gonna stay tonight, I look at that list and I choose the best option, search the area, find something that's you know safe. But I also stay in campgrounds some. Mooch docked one night. I hope to do more of that as I get closer. <laughs> I grew up on the East Coast and I'm headed that way, so I hope to do quite a bit of that on my way mm -hmm. north. I'll be staying with family in various places. Uh, not with them, I'll be staying in their driveways. I'm the world's easiest house guest <laughs> because I come with my own kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom. So I can visit without being a burden to anybody. In addition to boondocking and campgrounds, I have joined Harvest Hosts. I've only been to one so far. It was a delightful experience on a farm for uh, rescued animals. I'm going to stay in one tomorrow night on a farm also. So Kathy, tell us about your RV. Is this a van, a Class C, and what brand is it? I know we kind of said it's born free, but I've never heard of that before. It's a very rare RV brand. This is a 2009 born free 22 foot casual elegance and um, it was made in Iowa. It was made by a company that was very concerned about safety. It's all fiberglass and it's built more like a yacht than an RV. It even has a fiberglass roof, so there's very little likelihood of leaking. It has roll bars in it for safety, very good insulation. It has thermopane windows leather furniture, a vinyl floor, so no carpet. So it's, yeah. you know, 12 years old now, but the previous owner was very meticulous about the maintenance on it. So I felt comfortable buying it from him. It's considered a B plus. Some people would call it a C, but it does have a queen size bed over the cab. And what chassis is it? It's, this one is on a Chevy 3500, um, but most born frees are on the Ford 450 chassis. Okay. And is this dual tires? Yes, it's a dually. Okay, perfect. Well, it rides well, I'm assuming. Would you like to come in? Absolutely. Okay. Let's go in. Thank you so much for inviting me in, Kathy. I'm happy to have you. Wow, this is so cool. 
It is built like a yacht, isn't it? Yeah, it and is. Look at those ceilings you have up there. Yeah, it's a kind of a carpet-like substance, uh -huh. so you can't put nails in it, but you can hang things with Velcro. But it's really tall, like the further you go back. How tall are you? I'm five foot five, but I have had a friend in here who is six foot four, and he was walking around um, this part of it just fine. Yeah, it's really tall, so it's kind of slanted. I don't know if you guys can get a feel for that, but it's lower here and then works its way up that direction. It gets a little taller. All right, well tell us about your RV here that you have. Okay, um, I mentioned it has uh, leather furniture. Um, I have mm -hmm. the passenger seat set up as a travel bed for my dog because she likes to sit up there with me. The table folds down. Oh, I like that. And then this is a uh, like a filing cabinet for all the documents that go with the RV. two cup holders. These chairs swivel and, and recline to a certain extent. There was a leather couch over here, but for my trip, I took it out and put in a twin size bed oh. um, so that I would have a full time bed. And underneath of it, I've used the box spring area. It's not really a spring, it's a frame. Mm -hmm. And um, this is all on hinges and lifts up. And mm -hmm. I use that for storage. That's right. And you modified that yourself? I did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, do you sit on this as a couch also, or just I use can, it as a bed? I can, but I don't. Okay. I'm a solo traveler, so I tend to gravitate to the same chair yeah, all the well, time. And these recline too, like you said, yeah, so that's they do. nice. They have headrests also, but took those out for the trip. I replaced all the lighting with LED, and I'm finding that my batteries hold up really well. And you have lots of light in here. A lot. It's a, very, a lot of light. Yeah. I mean, just regular like window lighting too. Mm -hmm. It's not dark in here at all. No. Tell us about your windows here. Okay, they are thermopane, so they maintain the temperature really well. These, well, I put uh, metal bars in for security so I can leave them open if I want to sleep with a little air at night. Mm -hmm. um, they open up side to side, the screen slides back and forth. And oh, when wow. it's raining, you can leave them open to this point and then there are rain louvers on both of the side windows. Did you add those yourself? No, they were factory installed. Mm -hmm. I did add little deflectors over the drivers and passenger windows okay. so that I could leave the windows cracked. And that actually provides a lot of shade. So as you, can you put your window back uh, to the left? Look at the difference in the tenting. That's pretty significant. People walk by and don't even look to see if I'm in here when I'm sitting right next to the window. <laughs> I like that. So it's very safe, lots of security there. Right. I also have light filtering and um, room darkening shades. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. This is a queen size bed, but I'm using it like an attic. So okay. don't judge me. But <laughs> There's I, no judgment. I do have a, like a restraint here that that keeps everything up there. Okay. I did that with my class C too. I think a lot of us do. You got to use storage where you can. These are all factory curtains. They're still mm -hmm. in really nice condition. They're uh, room darkening. Those go all the way around there. I they see. they go um, in front of the backs of the front seats. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they curve. Yeah. Up like that. So you still see if you're outside, you can still see a little bit of the inside. Right. I also have a black blanket that I can put across here with clothes pins mm -hmm. so that it looks like it's just an empty vehicle. Um, I did make quite a few modifications to this um, in preparation for my 10 month RV tour of the United States, including taking out the couch and putting in a bed. The, the storage is pretty plentiful in the overhead bins. You know, we have hydraulics on all of the hinges. They're all soft clothes. But I did feel like I needed more storage, and that's why I, I created this space under the, the mattress for that. Here in the kitchen, there's a pantry, a pull-out pantry. Oh, you added that yourself? No, this was part of it, but mm -hmm. I added this middle shelf. Okay, right here. Yeah, where the okay. cans are oh, located. Looks like it came with it. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't need that much height. You're pretty handy there, Kathy. I'm very handy. <laughs> <laughs> the stove came with a one-piece cover and it removes, and I have spices under the back part of it right now, but I, I cut it down because generally I use one burner at a time. So it's just easier to take out a much smaller piece and cook on that front burner. I'm always cautious about anything hot being around it, uh, around the, the burner, That's of course. That's perfect. But then there's a nice built-in storage for it under here. 
There's a nice big drawer for pots and pans. Mm -hmm. More dish and food storage up here. Toilet paper, paper towels, mostly around the plumbing area down there. Mm -hmm. So I see you have a travel Berkey. I do have a travel Berkey and I leave it right where it is to travel all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I find that it takes up very little space. And how do you secure it? I have a bungee around it. That is, the, the strap itself is um, screwed into the wall behind it. So it's very secure. So and I can fill it from right here. Oh, that's perfect. So I don't have to move water. Okay. It's a double sink. I usually leave one side covered up. I might have a dog bowl in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I did install a hanging um, toaster oven. You have a lot of kitchen space, which is interesting for such a small, you yeah. know, we always think about that in vans and class C's, right? I never feel like I'm short on counter space. If I need more, I put this up. I put the, the cover on the other side of the sink, which mm -hmm. is tucked behind the head of the bed right there. There's plenty of room. I'm sorry, how long did you say this is? 22 feet. This is my wet bath. It's a Thetford porcelain toilet, and it does have a spray wand to clean it out. Towel bar. I don't use the sink as a sink. I use it for, for bathroom storage. I just use the kitchen sink for everything. The shower head is in there. I installed a water saving shower head. Do you actually take a shower in there? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, as little as I can because I like it to be all sparkly clean. I don't want water <laughs> spots on the walls. <laughs> but it's completely usable as a shower. It's totally usable. Like you don't see anything wrong with it? Not at all. Okay. And there's an outside shower and I have a shower tent so that's what I prefer to do. Okay. But you know, you can't do that everywhere. No. So I've got a pretty big refrigerator and freezer for an RV. Oh, that's big. I need to go grocery shopping, but <laughs> again, don't judge. There's no judgment. <laughs> this is a convection microwave, also known as snack storage when you're, uh, when you're not plugged in. <laughs> when you are plugged in though, it works fine. I've made um, cornbread in it, it works well. Do you cook a lot actually in your RV? I do, I have a, a three quart Instapot. I love to make batches of meals and freeze them in one serving portions. And then as I'm traveling, I just decide what I wanna have for lunch or dinner and set it in the sink to thaw. And well, there. that's nice because you've got the refrigerator and freezer mm -hmm. space to do that too. I do. So you have a soda stream over here. I do. I love my bubbly <laughs> water. <laughs> I love that. And then what is this here? A little bit of my artwork. I love to do art with corks, wine corks. That's just one example of something I've done. I've done um, in here. I don't know if you can see, but oh. a little bulletin board. That's really Notes cute. Notes and jewelry and that kind of thing. Yeah. More storage. You have lots of storage actually in here, I think. This connects to the outside storage. Compartments under the bed connect to outside storage okay. as well. Do you feel like you have enough storage inside here? I have plenty of inside storage. I wish I had a little bit more outside storage okay. for hoses, electric cords, that kind of thing. So I'm thinking of adding a trash to the ladder to hold some of that. Okay. And explain what a trash is. Okay, a trash is a big canvas bag that straps i think with velcro onto your onto your ladder mm -hmm. and you can keep trash in it like if you're out boondocking in the desert and you're going to be out there a long time you don't want to keep your trash inside where you would smell it mm -hmm. but it also can be used for storage so look at this area here that she has there's cherry veneer on the on the dashboard and uh, again two leathers captain's chairs that are extremely comfortable. The screen you see sitting on top of the dashboard is the backup camera, but it's actually a full-time rear view camera. And it's extremely good quality. I really rely on it a lot. There is a CB radio, as you can see. I have not used it yet, but the previous owner told me it's fantastic if you ever are on the highway and you get in one of those backups and you don't know what's happened or how long you're gonna be stuck. You can just turn it on, you don't need to talk, you just listen to the truckers because they usually have the down low. Um, it also has, I think it's, its highest channel is a full-time weather channel. So you always have access to good weather reporting. And then that little card holder right there holds my America the Beautiful Pass, which I used just yesterday. Chairs actually recline a lot. That's the control for the um, gas-powered generator, which I don't have to use very often. So do you have uh, lithium batteries or solar no, panels? No, I don't have any solar. This was this rig is a little older than that 
and I've been thinking about adding them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of just trying to figure out if I need it. And so far, I have done fine. I'm driving enough that my alternator charges my house batteries. I've never dipped below two thirds power on those. I'm less inclined to the solar on at this point. Yeah, it's an expensive upgrade, but if you don't need it and that's working fine for you. Uh -huh. I only have the controls here over the, the range hood, mm -hmm. so they're not really specific. Okay. And of course, the, the holding tank ones are always inaccurate, as RVers yes. know. They, you know. they get clogged up and they're never accurate. But that fresh water one is accurate, the LP is accurate, and the battery is accurate. There's the AC, and I really don't use it very much. Um, I'm trying to chase 70, as RVers call it, trying to stay in moderate temperatures. Mm -hmm. But I have had to use it, and I'm very grateful for it. I know, it's a dramatic AC. Yeah. It, is works, it quiet? works great, but it is not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it Never. is not quiet. It never is. And then your heating system? I have um, two sources of heat. There is a heat strip in here, mm -hmm. and then there is a propane furnace, and those are controlled with a thermostat. All of that's controlled with the thermostat over here. And where is your heat? Is it ducted or is it on the floor? There's um, ducts on the floor, okay. near the floor. I also travel with a space heater. If I'm plugged in at a campground, mm -hmm. I just use a little space heater because this is so well insulated that it heats up and cools down very easily. There are three roll bars for safety. One, so this is two, a, this is a roll bar, that's a roll bar right there. And then one back right here, there. Roll bar. that's pretty cool. The, uh, I don't think they make that in these RVs anymore either. No. No. One thing that I left at home because I'm not sleeping over the cab is a gorgeous cherry ladder that hooks on this bar right here. Okay. And so the ladder goes it up comes, this way? It come, yeah, it comes out here. And then you can climb into there. Climb right into okay. bed, yeah. That's interesting how they did that because usually you see them like right here. But I will tell you that when I had my class C, they had that metal right there to hook the ladder onto and I was always bonking my head against yeah, it. It's it dangerous. Hurt. Very dangerous. And I find this really handy for other things. You know, if I have spare cables or something, yeah. I drape them up there. I have two 12 volt fans that I use at night sometimes and they can clip onto that bar or I clip one onto mm -hmm. uh, a cabinet handle. There's a fantastic fan that's thermostatically controlled. Mm -hmm. So I can set it to come on it. 78 degrees or whatever but it is i don't have the, the super fancy one with a remote control but you can actually reach i can reach this, it fine nice. yeah. i can reach it fine so it's not a problem yeah what would you say is maybe the most unique thing you think about this particular rv the manufacturer i think the quality is the most unique thing mm -hmm. the roll bars the you know high-end cabinetry the craftsmanship it is just solid as a rock and the only thing that makes any noise is my personal possessions if I don't have them put away properly but the rig itself nothing squeaks there's no particle board in here mm -hmm. everything is put together with high-end hardware um, it's, it's just really impressive and then as far as like so everybody likes to know this question the bathroom yeah your toilet is connected to a black tank correct? it is connected to a black tank and so, you do all your business in there i try not to do number two in there i have you know yeah. when you have to but i try not to just because it's easier to dump it if you know there's yeah. less to rinse out of the stinky slinky if uh -huh. you haven't put anything <laughs> solid in it and so when you have to do number two what do you do i try to find a, a bathroom okay. and i have bagged it and then I triple bag it and throw it away like you do dog poo or baby diapers. This is the shore power connection. Everything is 30 amp. Okay, this compartment holds my outdoor shower. So this is where I put my shower tent if I'm gonna you know, shower outside. Mm -hmm. There are, this is hysterical, I'll show you how old the rig is. There's a telephone connection. Oh my gosh. There's a cable connection. <laughs> there's, a, there's a pretty good light. Fresh water fill, city water, and I have my hose rigged up to where I just it just pops in here. So I don't have to screw it oh, on and off the, every time. The quick releases. Yeah. Gotcha. It has something kind of like that on it. It just goes right in. Nice. I like that. Do also, you use the shower outside a lot? Yeah, I love doing that. I would. My home. My and even just washing your hair outside. You could uh -huh. just put on a bathing and, suit or um, something. And rinsing off the dog if she gets into something she shouldn't. Yeah. The rain louvers from outside so you can keep the windows open to here and still be very secure. Mm -hmm. This is the um, fuel fill. This okay. is... Um, 
storage that goes under the bed so you can access it outside or inside. Oh, that's quite nice. This oh, is the generator. generator and the house batteries. You can see the queen size bed up here. The mirrors have a, uh, a convex lower portion that provides very good um, visibility. Hi guys. <laughs> This is the CB radio antenna, and I did add, um, I added these deflectors over the passenger and driver windows so that I can leave the windows down a tiny bit and get ventilation without rain coming in. That's perfect. This is the propane tank. That thing's huge. It's 60 gallons. 60? 60 gallons. Oh my goodness. I've got like five maybe? Yeah. It's huge. So I want to point out her steps here too. They're actually, they stay out. It's part of the fiberglass of the body, which is really nice. And it um, clears the side. So actually the side of the RV is a little wider. So you're not gonna hit those steps. The back is dually wheels. And you, you can fill, you know, you can check the, the pressure on the inner tire through this little hose right here. Perfect. Connection, oh, connection. This is um, furnace uh, ventilation and refrigerator. And I run my refrigerator on propane most of the time because I have 60 gallons of it. <laughs> yes. Outside power. Mm -hmm. AC. This is the back of the refrigerator. This is under the refrigerator, but it's again, another, just another storage bin. That's okay. where my hoses and uh, electrical cables are. Okay. And then this is oh, storage, storage that's um, not connected to the inside at all. So that's where the, the See where hoses and stuff stinky are. slinky goes. <laughs> like that. It has an automatic step mm -hmm. that opens and closes with the door, or you can put it on, perm you know, you can have it stay out um, and it will automatically retract when you start the engine. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about it is that you actually access this from the back side. Yeah, that's very unusual. Most is... RVs um, access from the passenger side. It is. Um, so How it's... now? Like, what if you were towing a car though? Because I see you have a hitch. So if you towed a car, do you think that would be problematic? You would have to um, kind of maneuver around it. You would have to turn off the step. I haven't towed with this yet. It will. The previous owner towed a uh, Jeep, so mm -hmm. I know it. You know, it has the capacity. It has the seven-pin. Uh, electrical connection and a full size okay. hitch. And I didn't mention, but on the front, there's also a trailer hitch, mm -hmm. which um, would be the place to put a bike rack or a storage trunk. The handle is lighted at night. Mm, nice. And the steps come on with automatic lighting at night. And it's got this kind of rubberized material so yeah. you get in and out. And you've got the screen door here. So she has a screen door that closes, except we have the tree branches. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to close it all the way because no. I don't want to hurt the tree. No, no. It's a deadbolt and, you know, handle. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. Born free. What an amazing RV this is. It literally, the quality is incredible. And I'm so glad that Kathy gave me a tour and she stalked me over here and down in Savannah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> She's gracious. Thank you so much, Kathy. I really appreciate oh, it for you, you inviting me into your home. I've been a subscriber of yours for a long time and you've taught me a lot. I'm so happy that we crossed paths. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, share it if you can. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that button to subscribe and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Goodbye. Bye.